When Blue Origin announced they were going to pursue reusability and put passengers on New Shepard, I think a lot of us thought they were going to be a huge competitor to SpaceX. But as time goes on, I think a lot of us are starting to see that promise fade away. And in today's video, I'm going to get into why Blue Origin has been so disappointing recently and what I think some causes and solutions for this problem are. Just to preface a lot of this conversation I'm about to have, it's important to note that Blue Origin has actually been around for two years longer than SpaceX, being founded in 2000, while SpaceX was founded in 2002. Their main project at the start was New Shepard, a privately funded suborbital vehicle which can take up to six astronauts to 100 kilometers and officially make them astronauts. And it was revolutionary when it first started launching. I mean, it was a self-landing booster, it could do in-flight abort tests, and it looked like it was a great first step for the company. And when they announced New Glenn, people were cautiously optimistic, because although it was a huge step from New Shepard to New Glenn, this was new space we were talking about, and with Bezos' money and a lot of the talent that Blue Origin was bringing in, there was a lot of hope that they could actually compete with SpaceX and really challenge them for the spot of top space company. But it's been a couple years and we're on the 15th, 16th launch of New Shepard and they still haven't launched people into space yet. I mean, we're getting to the point where Electron and Rocket Lab are starting to look like they might be a better competitor to SpaceX than Blue Origin. And while I hate to get into comparing space companies, I think it's a valid point to make. Rocket Lab doesn't have a rich billionaire backing it, and maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe Blue Origin hasn't had that crunch that developed Rocket Lab and SpaceX and all these other new space companies that have a drive to succeed. Maybe they've just got too much money laying around and they can afford to do things like submit a completely flawed HLS bid that led to Starship being the only selectee. So I think that's one of the valid criticisms of Blue Origin. They just have too much money and too many resources that they don't have to overpromise and then try to meet those promises. I swear Eric Berger isn't paying me to say this, but his book Liftoff does paint a really good picture of how just how close SpaceX came to going out of business. And that formational experience, I think, gave SpaceX a real vision of their own mortality. And even today, you see them going after bids and just pursuing the space industry in a way that we really haven't seen before. And I think that's what gets people so excited about them. And on the other hand, Blue Origin had their first launch of New Shepard over five years ago. And they've managed to launch it only 15 times, this being a suborbital demonstrator with no orbit capability. I've seen Blue Origin claim that New Glenn boosters can be reused up to 25 times, but when they can't even get the launch cadence of their New Shepard rocket, which is probably like a hundred times smaller than New Glenn, down to less than six months, it just seems like an exercise in futility. And the thing that really motivated me to make this video was when I saw that Kuiper, Bezos' and Amazon's project for satellite internet, much like Starlink, was gonna buy Atlas V rockets to launch its constellation instead of using New Glenn as planned. You know it's bad when you're losing launch contracts to your CEO's own company. I mean, it's getting ridiculous at this point. This is coming on the heels of Blue Origin's loss in the HLS contract. Everyone expected them to win the contract. After all, it was Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and who knows how many other companies competing on the national team but they actually managed to submit a proposal so bad, it made NASA go back on their original promise to choose two companies, and instead chose SpaceX as the sole competitor and sole winner of the bid. And that I think really exposed another one of Blue Origin's flaws. And I think this flaw goes so deep, it's even in the company's motto, Gradiatum Ferociter, or Step by Step, Ferociously. They've taken the old space game and cranked it up to 100. From filing lawsuits on SpaceX over Starlink and reusability, to the Frankenstein's monster that is National Team, or to the BE-4 that they've contracted out to ULA, they've really tried to play the old space game, and I think this has been hurting them more than anything else. That kind of mindset is completely antithetical to the kind of vision we need to fulfill ideas like making humanity multiplanetary or going into space to better life here on Earth. 
And I think this mindset is inherently poisoning Blue Origin. They haven't gone into the business to innovate. They've gone into the business to make money. And while that might have worked for Boeing and Lockheed and ULA, I don't think it's going to work for Blue Origin because now they've got SpaceX to compete against. And SpaceX, if they were an old space company handed the Falcon 9, they would have sat on that for 20 years before the competitors came up with something better. They would have milked it for everything they'd had. But instead, within the decade, they were already testing another, even more revolutionary vehicle. And when you're competing against something like that, you can't afford to put profit first. And I think that's why Blue Origin lost the HLS bid. They were asking for a cost plus contract with advanced payments that just didn't fit what NASA was looking for on such a tight budget. SpaceX gave what NASA wanted, a vehicle already being tested, sustainable, vision for improvement, and most importantly, they offered to take on a lot of the cost themselves, while Blue Origin and their national team offered the complete opposite. They wanted advanced payments before work was being done. They offered a complex mission architecture with tons of stages. And I know that's kind of ironic to say with SpaceX and their multiple in-orbit refuelings, but it's not the same because SpaceX has a 100-day window in which they can refuel the Starship, which gives a huge cushion, along with the fact that they can test Starship and they will test Starship, while Blue Origin was asking NASA to cross their fingers and hoped it worked the first time. I don't want to make this all about HLS, but I think all of you guys should read the report and I'm going to put it in the description below because I think it was a really eye-opening thing to read and it showed me just how much NASA likes SpaceX and Starship and just how different SpaceX is from all these other companies. And look, I'm not here to bash on Blue Origin, although I've done that for about 7 minutes now. I think Blue Origin is still an extremely competitive company if they play their cards right. And that's a very important thing to say. They obviously have tons of resources. And now with Jeff Bezos stepping down as CEO of Amazon in order to pursue his other projects, chief among which is Blue Origin, I think there's a lot of hope that they're going to be a much more focused company in the coming years. I think that this year has been a huge wake-up call for Blue Origin and a lot of old space companies that NASA really isn't going to play ball anymore, and if they want to be competitive, they're going to have to step up their game. And with even the defense industry choosing SpaceX in their NSSL awards, Old Space is going to have a really hard time competing if SpaceX keeps eating away at their market share. If you look at the bright side, maybe losing these contracts will allow Blue Origin to refocus on the main parts of their business, the BE-4 and New Glenn rocket, and hopefully this is going to allow them to become a competitor in the launch market at the very least, which they can then leverage like, just like SpaceX has done into satellite internet, human exploration, and finally fulfill the goal that Jeff Bezos outlined in his high school valedictorian speech of humans living and working in space. And with that, I'm Cosplus Content, signing off.